Okay. <clears throat> so, this here is God's word, correct? Yes. Amen. And it's right. Yes. Amen. Correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen. Even the parts we don't like. Exactly. Or don't understand. Don't understand yet. They're right too. Yes. Correct? Okay. God's always right. Mm -hmm. His word is always right. In fact, remind me again. If there's something in here that you don't agree with, guess who's wrong? <laughs> Not uh, God. <laughs> Not God. That's right. Preach it from the back row. Uh, yeah. And what happens according to God with those who decide they're going to go on and wrestle with scriptures and argue with God? Right. He said it's going to end in their own destruction. Okay, we've learned that. First Peter, or Second Peter 3.16 in the King James. As also, we've talked about this already. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which some things are hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle, wrestling with the scriptures, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Okay, it is never a good idea to wrestle with scriptures. You will lose. <laughs> we talked about that. And according to God, it's going to end in a person's own destruction. And he'll know. Okay? And um, been a whole lot of that going on over the years. Right? This. Well, yeah, I know it says that in there, but I don't think that's what it means. Besides, God understands my circumstances. Right? And then we've moved over into telling God now what he means. In what he wrote right okay how many know God is serious about love walking in love mm -hmm. okay and he's serious about it because it matters for everything okay and um, according to God love is a uh, it's, it's a powerful force and I mean we call love all kinds the enemy has washed out that word and made it a whole bunch of stuff that it's not to get us off of the power that is in it. And um, so it is like a power force. According to 1 John 2, 5, there can come a point when God's love does this thing where it's allowed to run its full course and do everything God designed it to do in you. It's a powerful force. And though I may not know what all that is, right? If God's offering it, I want it, right? I need it. Okay, to have the God, the love of God run its full course in you, right? Um, so this week, this week I got to thinking about, um, you know, you know that saying that says people that are, people are looking for love in all the wrong places. Okay, and you see it, right? You see it. And so many <coughs> just, they, they keep reaching out and being disappointed again and again. And... Because we understand something. We understand that the, the deepest yearning in a person's heart, in every person, is to be loved and treasured, right? Looked after so completely that all their cares and all their hurts and all their fears, right, just melt away, right? And, um, <clears throat> and then, I mean, you see, right, ladies, movies are written. Uh-huh. To allow people to get caught up, even for a short time, in somebody else's beautiful story, right? And, you know, providing this temporary escape, right, from their own loneliness and trouble. And, but it never lasts, because when the TV screen goes back off, right, their beautiful story is, right, it's, 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 it's their, their not beautiful story is still there, right? And, oh, but the love of God. The love of God, His love is not temporary, it's like this um, tank filling kind. It fills your tank. And it's somehow when he does it, it's effective. And I remember one day, and you may have heard me give this account before, but I remember one day I was home alone. Patrick was at work. The kids were all in bed and I was just washing dishes in the kitchen. And um, it was dark outside. And um, I had just, you know, um, uh, when you spend a lot of your life pushing upstream, or, you know, flying as the goose in the front of the V. Right? Um, there's an aloneness that seems to come with that. And um, so that day, that particular day, I was feeling it. 
And um, and I could have, I could have went over and thought, oh, I'm just gonna watch an, a nice movie, a nice feel good movie, and I could. But as there, I was the, as I was there at the dishes, I said to Lori, I said no, because my heavenly Father is my absolute everything. And I said to him, I said, you're even this for me right now. And so I'm just asking you, I'm not going to go to the television set to, to feel, I just was feeling that aloneness. Mm -hmm. And um, so then I saw, like, we lived in a court that goes around in a circle. And so anytime when it's dark out, you would see the lights of the vehicle and it would just swoosh around and you knew that they went in and back out of the court. But this time I noticed, but I'm washing dishes in the big windows over here. So I'm not really paying attention except in your side vision, you can tell a vehicle, but I noticed it stopped. I thought, oh, you know, one of the neighbors, cause all neighbors around the court. Anyway, um, but I just, something prompted me. I thought, mm. so I went to the front door. I never go to the front door and check who's there, who's not there, unless somebody knocks or something. And there sitting on my porch was a big bouquet of fresh cut flowers in this jar. There was nobody there. So, somebody obviously had dropped it off. And we found out later that God had spoken to this one lady and said, I want you to take this thing of flowers right here and I want you to go drop it off and set it on Dorothy's porch. She had no idea. She still has no idea. But God told her to do that and so she did it. Mm. And somehow, I know, I know, it's only a vase of flowers. Like we have vase of flowers. Like they're pretty, they're beautiful, but really? It's still, but it did something. When God does it, when he's behind it, right. it's amazing how it just, that just filled up that tank and that whole aloneness thing was over. That's the love of God. That's the love of God. And so God takes that love of his and he does this thing where he sheds it abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us, Romans 5, 5. Okay. And so it's that God kind of love that God makes sure is put into our hearts at salvation. Okay, So the day that you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ on purpose, you did that. The, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came and he shed his love abroad in your heart. Okay, he did that. So at salvation, right, all that took place, that time, that moment where you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead, Romans 10, 9, okay, we became joined to the Lord, the Bible says. The Holy Spirit and our spirit joined. That's what happened. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit, Scripture says, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. And then God did something else. He did this. He says, to each God did give a measure of faith, Romans 12, 3. So our spirits came alive. Okay, so we were dead in sin, but scripture says, but he quickened us together, made us alive together, Ephesians 2, 5. Okay, so our spirits came alive and then God joined our spirit to his Holy Spirit. And that would be the place where communication would take place from that time on. Okay, and that is a place of communicating that Satan cannot interfere with because he does not have a spiritual life. He cannot interfere in that. Okay, we've talked about that in hearing God, listening for him down here, down in your spirit, not up here in your head and thoughts come flying around in your head. No, from down here. And if you pay attention when it's God, a thought does eventually make his way up here, but it comes from down here up to here not dropped in from up satan can drop thoughts in from up here but god the spirit of god the spirit of truth speaks to your spirit down here and then the the, the uh the natural understanding of that thing comes up from down here up to your natural mind and if you pay attention you'll start to notice the difference god will help you to do that okay so and then God then made sure that we had faith to get started with. He gave us the measure of faith. And then he also made sure we had love. His love shed abroad in our heart so that the faith could get to work. Okay, like, are you seeing how God has looked after everything? And then he gave us this book in which are alive and powerful words that when you read them out loud and your ears hear them as you read them out loud, more faith will come. Okay, so you'll start out with a measure, but then you can get more. Okay, and if we'll get to the love scriptures and all the ones where God promised, where all the ones he's promised where love is concerned, more love would come too. 
Do you see how he set all this up for us and done it all for us, right? And so now you've got all you need to do anything. You've got his words that you read, his promises, what he promised you and said in here. And then you've got faith that comes because you heard these words. And then you've got love that makes the faith work. Are you seeing this? Okay. Love is a most precious thing. Okay. By the power of God in you, it is possible to um, love with his love so um, deeply and so well that people just by watching you, just by being around you, can encounter God. It's real. It's, 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 it's a powerful force. It's in you and it's on you, right? There's just that, that love just enters a room with you when you do, right? And people can tell there's something about you, right? Something that it's somehow that their world just feels better with you in it and they can't for the life of them explain why. It just is. Uh-huh. It's the love of God. The same love wherewith God loves Jesus is rich in you and you love people with that love. You don't mean to, right? Like you're just you're just living life normally, okay? And here's the thing. You may you may not mean to and not even be aware of it, but even your words are wrapped in it. Even corrective words. His love is in your tone, it's on your touch, and all that is the mighty, powerful force of the love of God. It draws people. It causes people, you know when they're going through their phone and scrolling through social media, they're going, and then they see there's a picture of, of you or your family comes across, but it's got the love of God. You know how you can look at a couple different pictures on social media and you see people going, and there, but there's no joy. It, there's a smile, but there's no joy. And then you scroll past another picture and they go, whoa, and they scroll back. There's something here. There's something here and they can't put their finger on it, but it's the love of God and they can, it's, it's like the people in the picture are wearing it. And it impacts people's lives just by seeing it. It is a powerful, powerful thing. The more you yield to the love of God, okay, put it in you from in here and agree with it give it priority, the more people will see and feel it on you, feel it coming from you, and it will make a powerful impact on people's lives. Okay? And I know, I mean, I know that we live in a world where, you know, you got to use wisdom, right, in these things. Okay? But I find that so many people crave touch, the right kind, the right kind, right? And um, I remember, and Patrick, Patrick would just, anyway, I don't, sometimes I don't think what, I just, I just don't think about <coughs> some things. And I remember I was in the dollar store and there was this man, he looked like Asian or something. He's probably 67 years old. And he was standing there in the aisle. I don't know what he's looking for, but he was just standing there and he did this great big yawn as I walked past him. So I just, like, I don't even think first. I just, I put my hand on it. Like I just kind of put my hand on his arm like this and I go, you need a nap. And like, I don't even know this guy, right? And his fate, but there was something about him that just, um, he, uh, I, you could tell by the look in his face he, that it impacted him somehow. It was a silly thing, you need a nap, right? And I was just kind of clowning around, but there's something when the love of God is wrapped in just even silly words like that. And in that simple, just the touch. You understand what I'm saying? It makes a difference. I remember this, we were on our way to Florida and like sometimes Patrick's just like, Dorothy, because we have this conversation. No, I'll tell this one first. So we're uh, at a basketball game at, uh, we're, it was at Brock and you were helping coach the one time. Remember you're on the other side of the floor than me? Do you remember this? I don't know where you're going. He was helping coach. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I'm sitting in the bleachers watching our boys play like they play uh, D1 ball and stuff. So anyway, so, uh, there's this lady sitting beside me. I don't know these people, but apparently I don't need to know them. And um, so Patrick's looks, he looked, all of a sudden he looks, because she made some kind of comment that the uh, ref made kind of a, a call she didn't agree with. And so she made some kind of comment that wasn't, <laughs> she was a heathen, a good heathen. And so anyways, so I just, I just kind of laughed and I, like I swat, I don't think first, <laughs> like I don't know these people, but Patrick caught it and he, cause we've had conversation. He's like, can you stop 
hitting people, <laughs> people you don't know. And so he's, ac he's across the thing and he goes like this. He looks at me, he's on the other side of the basketball game. The game's going on, he looks at me, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you know, <laughs> anyways. Okay, but I mean the right kind of time. But she's laughing, like she wasn't, she's just laughing. It's like, you know, we know each other. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, our family, I mean, our, it was kind of, you're like that too, but I mean, we're just, physical touch is probably at the top of the St. Pierre family's love language. Our daughter-in-laws will tell you that. And uh, now with the boys, it's often outworked in wrestling, right? Papaya, wrestling and tackling. Our imports, our daughter-in-laws, our daughter-in-laws, Patrick and I go call them our imports, <laughs> imported into our family. Um, but they would, they're, they're like, can we not just have one visit where you guys leave each other alone, right? Like, cause the talks that go on in the car with our boys as the wife of the St. Pierre son is like, can we just once, can we once just leave their home after our time together where there's not been a pile up of St. Pierre brothers with the dad, with dad at the bottom of the pile, right? Can we just try it once? Anyway, I am not advocating tackling people or anything like that, resting to the floor. Um, however, no. <laughs> okay, there is all that, I'm clowning around, but there's something so important to pure, safe touch in a person's life. It can do so much. And then there's something so much more powerful when that pure, safe touch comes with the love of God all over it and wrapped in it. It matters. It, Satan's got an agenda in separating people and keeping distance between people and say, don't touch, don't hug, don't. He has an agenda. He has an agenda in defiling touch and making it what it's not supposed to be to make people afraid of the right kind. You understand what I'm saying? Their strategy. It is a powerful thing, the love of God, and it's transferred also through touch. Okay? Um, even simple words, right? They do not even have to be profound or anything, but when they're wrapped in the love of God, right? And you don't even realize they are. You're not trying to, okay? The love of God allowed to run its full course and do everything God designed it to do in you. Now watch this, <laughs> Romans 12 too. Be kindly affectioned one toward another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another, okay? Above all things, that is Romans 12, 10. Then 1 Peter 4, 8, above all things, have fervent love among yourselves. For love shall cover the multitude of sins. It overlooks unkindness and unselfishly seeks the best for others. The Amplified. Okay? 1 Peter 1.22 speaks of um, this unfeigned love of the brethren. And that seeing to it that you have love one for another with a pure heart fervently. Okay? I don't know about you. I need God to keep doing that in me. Right? And in a day, when it, sometimes it's the brethren that Satan has often incited to fight so hard against you. Yet God says, love the brethren with an unfeigned love. Unfeigned love. With a pure heart fervently. Right? It's not something you can produce on your own. I can't produce it and neither can you. Okay, but the love of God, if we'll let it do its powerful work, run its full course in us, can produce it. Okay, Mark 12, 30 and 31. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And this is the first commandment. And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is none other commandment greater than these. None other commandment greater than those. The love walk, that's what we're gonna call it today, the love walk. The love walk, every step in love is a step toward him, toward God, toward our Heavenly Father. And every step out of love, off that love walk, draws you away, okay? And what we need to have <coughs> a solid understanding on is that nothing works without it. Nothing works without love. Things in the kingdom will not work for you without it. Everything gets done 
We know this by now, according to your faith, right? We see in scripture, according to your faith, be it done unto you. Anything you're believing God for, faith has got to be there. You go to the word, you hear what God said about it. You keep hearing about it, hearing about it. Faith comes as you do. And faith is a thing needed to get the thing done. But here's the kicker. If you don't have love and not, you're not walking in love, you can have done all that for nothing. Because faith works by love. Okay? Everything gets done that way. In fact, anything that's not of faith is sin. We know that too. Romans 14, 23. Okay? But none of it, none of it works if you're off the love walk. Okay, so I can have taken much time to be filled, full, fill myself full of the word of God concerning a circumstance that I've got in front of you, in front of me. Okay? And then faith for a miracle needed, okay? Kept, came as I was reading the scriptures on it and kept coming. And now I'm at the point where I'm prospering on the inside of me about that thing. Okay, so and now I'm all ready for the manifestation of it, for that thing to show up on the outside, for that thing to be dealt with and for the victory to be had. And I'm all ready for it, ready for it. To find out that being off the love walk, getting off that love walk, stops it all in its tracks. And I go no further. And there seems to be an unending supply of things that are just waiting there for you to get, you know, to step off that love walk. Right? Well, of course. Right? If you're any good at your job as a devil at all, you'll make sure of it. Right? Irritations. Frustrations. Hard things. Right down to wrong thinking. Okay? I don't know about you, but I need God's help with this because I cannot afford to get off the love walk. There's so much that I'm needing my faith working for. I can't afford to have it not working. Okay, but if I'll stay on that love walk, my faith's going to be working even while I'm sleeping. Oh, yeah, right? And it's simply, it's, it's, it's not simply, it's grabbing those thoughts and slapping them down and saying, that's not love. I'm not thinking that. It's grabbing those words before they come out your mouth and go, no, that's not love. I'm not saying that. Right? You can't control your thoughts or your words just by your willpower alone. Okay? But you know what you can do though? You can control what goes in your heart. That you can control. You can control what goes in your heart. And if you will keep putting God's words down into your heart by putting it in your eyes and in your ears every day and keep the wrong stuff out by not looking at it and not, not hearing it, then your thoughts and your mouth are going to fall into line. Okay. Now know this: Satan has never, we know Satan has never changed his methods. Okay, so if you're busy standing in faith on something that God said concerning a situation or a circumstance that's standing there in front of you, the devil will do whatever it takes to stop you from seeing the victory in it. And he does that by getting us to, number one, think and talk the problem, the wrong stuff, what God didn't say about it. And then another one of those methods, one of the one of the one of those methods is to get you off that love walk. Okay, so get you talking the wrong stuff so that your words will work against your situation. And the second thing is to get you off the love walk, to get you irritated about some dumb little thing or some big significant thing, as long as it works. Okay, because then he can get your faith stopped in its tracks. And without faith, that thing is not coming to pass. And the devil knows it. Okay, now couples who get this, Families who get this, who understand this, friends who get this can really help the cause. Okay? If you have an understanding together that um, fussing between you is not worth what you can lose when you're believing for stuff, we can help each other out. And remember that, look, if I say this, that's going to irritate, that's going to push their buttons. It's going to get, then I'm off the love walk for doing it. And it pushes them off the love walk if they react to it. Let's not set each other up that way. Right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's easy for us to, I mean, like, we've all been there. We all do it. Like, how many times do you go, seriously? 
with, I mean, just last night, Patrick and I had a situation where it's just like, okay, really seriously, we know better than this. It's so easy to do, but if we're aware of it, we can work together and not allow the enemy to get in there and be able to pull that stuff on us successfully. Okay, slap that thing down. The moment we notice that we've yielded to it, just go, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. I repent of that. I cancel it now in the name of Jesus. And that stops him in his tracks. Okay, God said this in 1 John 2, verses 3 and 4. This is kind of the Dorothy translation. It says this, this is how we know God. If we keep his commandments, <coughs> keep his word, live what it says in here. Goes on to say, the guy who says... I know him and doesn't keep his word, doesn't live what it says, is a liar. That's what God says. And the truth is not in him. Okay? You look it up. That's 1 John 2, 3, and 4. And then he also said in the next verse, verse 3, verse, verse 5, but whosoever keeps his word, lives what it says, in that guy, in that guy, truly is the love of God perfected. And the love of God perfected means growing, developing, maturing. Okay, Amplified says, allowed to run its full course, doing everything God designed it to do. But you're going to have to obey what's in here, not pick and choose what you agree with. Okay? And so, I mean, I don't know what you, I need the love of God to run its full course in me. So that it can run its full course in my circumstances. So that faith can run its full course in my circumstances. Because with love working, the faith is also working. Okay? And with love working, there's no fear to contaminate the faith. Because there's no fear in love. Perfect love casts it out, 1 John 4, 18 says. Okay? Your circumstances can't do anything but change in that condition. And change to line up with what life with what the word, truth, what God has said and thought and planned and purposed for you. Okay? Love. There's none other commandment greater. Okay? And then 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, And now there remain faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. You think? Right? It's what makes everything work. Okay, there's just something about when that love of God gets to running its course. You begin to notice that people who are kind of hard to like before seem to have changed somehow, right? Or the things they've done and probably still are doing to make life harder for you than it needs to be don't seem to be so troublesome anymore. And, and for some, like your heart actually begins to feel for, feel compassion for. And you have this understanding now down on the inside of you that that one really has reasons of their own, like in their own minds for why they're doing what they're doing. And for them, those reasons make sense and they feel they're good ones, right? And so now you can more easily separate out and recognize that perhaps it wasn't so much that it was a personal attack against you, but they, their reasoning, they, they, have the, they have their reasons for it and for them, their reasons make sense. So it makes it such that it's easier to dismiss some things that come against you as, you know, they meant well. They meant well. Right? And suddenly, somehow, whether they meant well or evil, evil, it doesn't pack the punch it used to. Okay? And so God's love, this is what scripture says, 1 Corinthians 13, 7, God's love in me is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Now, not that you always can but you're always ready to, okay? You know what, you know what all that is? <clears throat> all that, those changes that, that just happened, the circumstances didn't change. I changed. Mm -hmm. I changed the love of God that I was giving priority to by putting it in me, in the scripture, on purpose, and agreeing with it was doing its work, right? Got to producing all that, okay? And I needed to produce all that right? It makes for a much easier time staying in that love walk, right? Like when you see someone who has definitely earned something else, right? And uh, 
Like maybe a punch in the nose. And if you've got time, a hair pulling. I mean, at least if you're Brazilian, you can tell. She'll listen to the link later. If you're Brazilian, your name is Ingrid. That's the way you roll. Okay? That's the way Brazilian girls get it done. Pop a problem person in the nose, and if you've got time, pull their hair. <laughs> I'm not silly enough to do that when she's to talk like that when she's in the country. She'll hit me, pull my hair. <laughs> okay, should I tell that story? Sure. Can you guys keep a secret? Good, so can I. I'm going to keep that secret. Okay, let's keep going. Though I speak with the tongue of men and angels, though I have the gift of prophecy, understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, if I don't have this love we've been talking about, it amounts to nothing. God said that. He goes on to say, and though I give everything I have to feed the poor, give my body even to be burned, profits mean nothing. No reward in that. It helped and profited them, but it didn't profit you because love wasn't there. 1 Corinthians 13, right? We call that the love chapter. And it is, but that's only part of it because this also could be, you know, seen as the growing up chapter, right? Because growing up spiritually is really about, you know, growing up in and developing in love, right? Now, I just want to let me touch on something else really quick for a minute while we're here. Verse 8 of 1 Corinthians 13 um, says this, love never fails never fails okay and that means the meaning that there is that it never runs out it doesn't stop it doesn't quit okay but some people like to think that the love never fails there means that if 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 they love a person with the love of god and that they're, they're, they're not going to fail to receive the desired outcome where that person is concerned because love never fails. Do you understand what I'm saying? Love never fails. So I'm just going to keep showing that person love and it's going to make, it's going to ensure that what I want done in that person's life or in that circumstance is going to get done because love never fails. But that's not true. That's not true because that assumes that that person doesn't have a will. Okay, you can love a person and continue to love them and walk in love toward them. And they never do move off being critical of you or hostile toward you or acting like your enemy and trying to destroy you. Why? Because God lets them choose. He will let them choose to never respond right to the love you continually show them. Yet, the love of God loves anyway. Are you understanding this? Okay, so the, that way you don't set your up, yourself up to fail by believing something scripture didn't say. Love never fails simply refers to it doesn't quit. It doesn't get, like, you don't fail to give love. You don't stop loving. No matter how the other person or situation looks, you don't quit. The love of God doesn't quit. But it doesn't guarantee it's going to change that other person because God still gives them the freedom to choose. Okay? All right. Okay. Now, oh, now understand something else. In loving them, regardless of how they treat you or talk about you, you do this thing where you make room for them to be able to let things go and change the path they're on. Okay? But you can't manipulate them or push them just because you're choosing to love them. They will still get to choose regardless of what you do. Okay? God won't make them make the right choice and you can't. God won't and you can't. Okay? And verse 4 in that same chapter says, love suffers long and is kind. Okay? Suffers long. That means bears with, puts up with. And it's not just bears. So in this, you know, you're handing out all this love and you're not seeing anything change. And you're thinking, I might as well quit. No, 
Love never fails. It doesn't quit. When you have the God kind of love, it doesn't quit. But also, it suffers long and it's, it's kind. It bears with, it puts up with, but it's kind while it's putting up with. It's not just putting up with. It's being kind while you're putting up with. Okay? The Christian walk, right, if you're doing it right, is not for sissies. Right? I see Shauna. Shauna goes, no. <laughs> right? It takes great strength to live like this. Right? An idiot can take a fit and demand their rights. <coughs> right? Those who call, you know, the Christian life this crutch do not have a sweet clue what they're talking about. Right? And when they said it, they just put their profound ignorance on display. Right? Now, what you do need to keep before you is that in all of this, you are going to always get better results and better outcomes, no matter how it looks, if you walk in love. Okay? You're, that's just, that's the way it is. Okay, love is always, hands down, the better way. Okay? And God has a whole lot to say about some of these things. And he's blunt. Okay? Remember, God's right. His word is right. Even the parts we don't like, they're right too. Correct? Okay, and God addresses some things, which means he knew they'd be a thing. Okay? All right, so watch this. 1 John 2. I'm going to read, I'm going to read a few scriptures here. First John 2, I read verses 7 to 11. Beloved, I'm not writing a new commandment to you, but an old commandment, which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the message which you have heard before from us. On the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you, which is true and realized in Christ and in you because the darkness of moral blindness is clearing away and the true light, the revelation of God in Christ, is already shining. Verse 9. The one who says he is in the light, in consistent fellowship with Christ, and yet habitually hates, works against his brother in Christ, is in darkness until now. The one who loves and unselfishly seeks the best for his believing brother lives in the light, and in him there is no occasion for stumbling or offense. He does not hurt the cause of Christ or lead others to sin. Verse 11, but the one who habitually hates, works against, I'm reading the Amplified, works against his brother in Christ, is in spiritual darkness and is walking in the darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. You get over there where you start coming against, working against a brother or sister in Christ, God calls that hate. And that one, though he or she believes themselves to be in the light on it, to be the one, you know, seeing it right, is in fact the one in darkness and can't even tell because their eyes have been blinded. Very scary spot to be in because you can actually believe you're doing God a favor. Right? Remember Saul who became Paul? Okay. Now the side note that came with this scripture is this, that the key to understanding this and other statements about love is to know that this love, the Greek word agape, is not so much a matter of emotion as it is doing things for the benefit of another person. That is having an unselfish concern for another and a willingness to seek the best for them. Okay. Now New King James Version reads it this way. He who says he's in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there's no occasion for, there's no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Okay, now God talks about it again and he's direct, right? He's serious. First John 3, so the next chapter, First John 3. I'm going to read verses 10 to 12. By this... The children of God and the children of the devil are clearly identified. Ready? Anyone who does not practice righteousness, who does not seek God's will in thought, action, and purpose, 
is not of God. Nor is the one who does not unselfishly love his believing brother. For this is the message which you believers have heard from the beginning of your relationship with Christ, that we should unselfishly love and seek the best for one another and not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother Abel. And why did he murder him? Because Cain's deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Okay, so what does God tell us to do? What does he tell us to do in scripture? He tells us over and again, he tells us this. Look at the fruit. Look at the fruit. By their fruit, you're going to recognize them, the scriptures say. Okay, so how we act and how we conduct ourselves in situations and what results from our actions is fruit. Good fruit or bad fruit? Okay, talk's cheap. Locks can talk the talk and sound so spiritually impressive, but keep watching. Keep watching. Watch for what shows up when they don't get what they want. When they want what they want and they feel you're standing in the way. Watch for the fruit, not the talk, the fruit. There have been times, right? Like many more times. We, we know we've, we've all been there, right? Times when we've been there more than we'd like to admit we've been there or we may be right in the middle of one of those now where, you know, you're the one who's got some ugly fruit, right? Your actions and reactions to things have told a story of what's yet down on the inside of you. And anytime pressure comes, that's what gets squeezed up and out where it can be seen. And the fruit's hanging there and it can't be hidden. Oh, but we can repent. <laughs> Woo we can repent, right? And we can go put it right. And we can yield to the love of God, get it filling us from his word on purpose, and get to keep in God's word, meaning what he says in here, do it, right? We talked about that. Refuse to be a forgetful here, get to be in a doer of it, okay? And get to obey in what it, obey in what it says, even parts we don't like, especially the parts we don't like, right? Because when we get doing that, According to God, his love will then be allowed to run its full course and to do everything God designed it to do in us, right? Again, how we need that to be the case, okay? Now, understand this too. Loving is not being accepting of their sin. You love the person you do not accommodate and make room for the sin. That's not love. Okay. Even Jesus eventually had to have that man. Remember we from a few weeks ago in 1 Corinthians 5, 5, who continued to live in justified sin. He had to have him delivered over to Satan. And for what purpose? What drove that? Love. Precious love drove that. Deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Oh, what great love and mercy that is. That his spirit would be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. If the guy would respond right to the delivering over and break agreement with the sin. Because at the end of the day, the body is just a body. Okay, but the spirit, the spirit lives on forever. And if some hardship coming to man's flesh through Satan would result in the man's spirit being saved because he repented, worth it. Yeah. Worth it to not spend forever in hell. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so it is for your loved one. Accepting their sin and making room for it, accommodating it, may make your life feel smoother down here in some ways, but that will that choice is going to contribute, it can contribute to them never repenting and the reaping that comes with that. That's where we need to be in one mode throughout life. Whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever God says, 
because he'll know the details. He will know details and variables that you know nothing about, and he'll be right. Okay. Some people think that that a um, you know if if you're truly a loving person, you know you're one then who you know actively coddles and pampers people's feelings anytime things go wrong. And they, they think it's loving, you know, in times of trouble to feel sorry for someone and to hug them and hold their hand and say how hard it all must be. I just feel so bad for you. I'm not sure. Yeah, how are you ever going to be able to make it? Right? But according to the Word of God, we've learned some things. According to the Word of God, with, there are times when that is just the opposite of what a true, what true loving and a com truly loving and compassionate person would do. Because in those moments... Real love refuses to be moved by the emotions of the moment. They know they can't, or they'll be contributing to that person's defeat. Okay? Instead, real love grabs hold of the Word of God by faith and stands firm on it until the victory is won. Right? And that can look insensitive to, to those who really like to prefer to have attention and sympathy and to be fussed over. Okay? Now, God's got more to say on this. Okay? 1 John 4. So next chapter, verses 20 and 21. If anyone says, I love God, and hates, works against his Christian brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. No, but Dorothy, I do love God. I do love God. I just don't think that that brother or sister in Christ should be doing what they're doing. And so I'm just putting up some roadblocks, making sure they know that I'm not in agreement, you know, for their good and the good of others. So I know it can maybe look a certain way, but you can't say I don't love God. I didn't say it. God did. He said, if you act like that, and say you love God, you're a liar. Okay, and we see right here that apparently, right, just to do that and say, no, I do, you can't say I don't love God, even though I'm acting this way towards my brother. Um, they're already to the point where they're arguing with God and they're arguing with scripture, all right, thinking they know better than him, okay? And scripture goes on to say, and this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should also unselfishly love his brother and seek the best for him. Okay? But Dorothy, I try to respond in love to things and I just keep blowing it. It's such a struggle. I can't seem to do it. Okay? Now, who here finds it easy to always respond in love in every situation? <laughs> I try. I know. It's, <laughs> seriously, it's just, you like, okay, anyway. You like to hit in the nose and pull some hair. Pulling Ingrid, right? Anyway, Galatians 5, watch this. So this whole thing, it just, it, it's a struggle. It's a struggle for me. I want to do it. I want to always respond in love, but it's a struggle for me to do it. Now watch this, Galatians 5, 22 to 24. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of his presence within us, is love, this is first, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, this is all in the Amplified, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the fruit of the Spirit. Against such things there is no law, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature together with its passions and appetites. Now notice, love is a fruit of the Spirit. Fruit just grows naturally. It was like I was going to do with the kids here. Fruit just grows naturally, right? It grows naturally. No tree, you know, strains and struggles to bear fruit. All the branch has to do is just to remain connected to the tree. And then as it draws its life from the tree, fruit just comes forth naturally. Okay? Are you seeing your answer here? Stay connected to the tree. <clears throat> Just stay connected to him. Stay in his word. And the fruit will come. 
love will come. The ability to love will come. You'll grow in it, okay? And time will pass as you do, and you'll be growing. And soon you're going to look and realize the love of walk, the love of God walk, that walk of love is really coming more easily to you. And you no longer react to things the way you once did. Love is starting to run its course in you. Okay? But if you get sloppy and busy and distracted or quit, you can get separated from the tree. Are you seeing this? John 15, verse 4. This is a New Living Translation. Remain in me. This is Jesus talking. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it's severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. So the moment a branch is broken off the vine, separated from it, it begins to die. No matter how close it is to the vine, no matter how close it's laying to the vine, close does not mean connection to. Hanging around it does not mean connection to. Coming to church every Sunday does not mean connection to. Us putting our nose in the book and putting it in us is connection to. And doing what it says is connection to. Okay, but no energy can flow from the vine into the branch in that condition when there's that separation. Okay, and that's what happens to us when we don't remain in vital contact with the Lord. In his word, reading it every day. Praying every day. Taking time with him daily. Because if you don't, you will begin to wither and so will your love because it's a fruit. Okay, the branch will wither when it removes itself from the vine. But that doesn't happen because the vine's mad at the branch. No, it withers because there's no living contact between them. And so the vine can't get to the branch what it wants to get to the branch. Okay? And besides, when you look, the scripture does not say that the vine gathered withered branches and burns them. It says men do. Okay? So even then, it's not God who's doing it though it often gets blamed on him. Okay? How many of you got your love page scripture started, your pages? Seriously? Do you got your page of love scriptures? Anybody got it started? Okay, we got one Mexican in the back. She's got hers started. <laughs> Karen's got her, right? Okay, right. Remember when we talked back in July, we talked about that walk of love? Again, if you want that link, request it. I will send it to you again. But it, it's because it's so vital to have, I have my, you know, pages of love scriptures, pages of healing scriptures, it, all these different, for my kids, for our finances, okay? But one of them is pages of healing, of love scriptures. Because as you read over the love scriptures, feeding on them, feeding on them, thinking on them, meditating on them, agreeing with them, it's going to get you prospering on the inside of you concerning the love of God. That is staying in connection to the vine. That's staying connected to the vine. That's how you stay connected. And it's going to show up once it's down there on the inside. We know this by now. Once it's in us in abundance, down on the inside of us, that love of God, because we've been reading the love scriptures over and over and saying, I believe that. And you read them again and go, oh, I believe that. That's who I am. Yep, that's who I am. The love of God is in me. And you keep agreeing with them. Then it's going to show up on the outside as fruit. Okay? And then it's going to be there so that your faith can get working to get stuff done. Okay, let's go to 1 Thessalonians 3. Because there's some very good news there that I personally count on. <clears throat> I know that I need these verses to be operational in my life, right? Like we, we all do, like we need air, like we need water. We gotta have it or we can't live this life in God. To have our faith working, it's got to be fully functioning, right? And I've, I've got to, I put the post of this on a, to uh, uh, Facebook, but I've got to count more on my love walk to stay healthy or provided for or anything else than I do my confessions of faith. Because I gotta understand that I can confess scriptures all day long, but if my love walk is not where it needs to be, I'm done. Because my faith will be out of commission then too. I can't, I can't afford to have that. Okay? It's the Holy Ghost the Bible says, who sheds the love of God abroad in our hearts. 
Romans 5, 5. And I need that love of God in my heart because when it's in my heart, then it affects my thoughts and my words. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he, scripture says. So when my heart is full of the love of God, then out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth will speak, scripture says. So when my heart is full of the love of God, it will affect what my mouth speaks. And when it's in my, ma in my heart, then it also impacts what I think, what I believe, and what I say, and therefore impacts my circumstances. Right? So I need his help. Like, I understand, especially in this hour, we need his help with urgency. Right? We can't afford to get off the love walk for a minute. And there seems to be, like these days, it seems to be there's this abundant supply going on in our everyday world. You know, we're going to get you angry and frustrated and off that love walk more than ever before. Strategy. Satanic strategy. Okay? What we've got to understand is this. Just to simply um, make a decision that's driven by worry. You just got off the love walk. Because we're not believing, it's not, it's not loving God enough to trust him. It's not trusting in his love. Do you see how we've got to put the scriptures in here? Because how do you, you cannot manufacture this. You can't try really hard and do this well. We need a supernatural working of God on the inside of us to be able to create this in us. So we operate this way. So we will not give consideration of worrying about something. Like, oh, no, no, no. I'm not worrying about that. I am not getting off my love walk. Because I need my love working to fix this situation that I could potentially have worry about instead. Okay, you seeing how this goes? And so, so making decisions, complaining. <clears throat> complaining in your heart about how long it's taking to see a victory in a circumstance is not love. Because it's not loving God enough to trust him. It's not trusting in his love. I need everything I say and everything I do and everything I think about. I need all of it to be wrapped in the love of God. Right? Even, even so that a word of correction, though the Lord may have, you know, have me be very direct with something. It has to be wrapped. I want it wrapped in the love of God. All right. Even the things that always don't always feel like love to the one who, you know, just wants what they want and feels like you're picking on them and not being very thoughtful. No, when you truly love, it's not about you. It's not about you. Okay. Your love for someone is going to drive you to do things that are selfless. Why? Because it's worth it to you just because of love, right? We know this. God sacrificed his own son for us. And what prompted him to do it? Love, right? Things I, when I think back over things that God has asked of me that my flesh absolutely did not want to do, but my love for my heavenly father carried the far greater weight. And I remember the times, you know, when, you know, you, Fits are being taken, big and small, and threats being made, and strong arm tactics being used to get you to, you know, back down off something God said. There was no way I was about to not do what my father had need of me to do just because nastiness was coming at me to try and make me quit. I love my heavenly father way too much for that. Right? So beat me if you gotta. Come at me with everything you've got if you have to. But the love of God in you can be so strong that it doesn't matter what comes at you. You're not bound to the junk. Because the love of God for him and for the ones coming at you is so strong in you, you're immovable. The love of God is a powerful force. Okay? And so, and here's the thing, when, when we do that and we come against people like that, we got to remember, it does good for us to remember who's backing that one. We've got to get there. Where all he has to say is, you know, Darlene, I have need of you for this over here. 
And your love for him is so deep and so strong that you don't care what it costs you, you're going to get it done for him. And besides, you know, he's going to fully back you anyways, enable you to get it done it, with his might, his power anyway. Okay. But there will be a way to do it. There will be a way to walk that way, to walk out your life that way. There will be a way to walk in the love of God to that degree, to the degree that's needed, right? It will absolutely be possible or God would not have told us to do it and asked it of us, okay? So if back, uh, 1 Thessalonians 3, I had asked you to go there, verses 12 and 13, we finally got there, okay? And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another, and toward all men. To the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so right off the bat, to have that right there, to have what God just said, he's got to be Lord in your life. Because notice it says, it doesn't say this, it doesn't say, and God make you increase. <coughs> If he would have meant that, he would have written it. But no, he said, and the Lord make you increase. So he, in order for you to be increased by him with this love that you're wanting, he's got to be Lord in your life in order to do it. If he's not Lord in your life, he cannot bring that verse to pass for you. Okay? Lord. Meaning he's the boss of your life. Not you and not in theory but in actual fact, okay, in everything, you're checking with him on what he says about it, what he wants you to do, and you get on it and you do it, okay, it's like Karen said, each month she goes, God, what do you want me to do here, and he says, just trust me, she goes, I'm on it, be still and know I'm God, all right then, I'm on it, whether it makes sense or not, okay, because bills still need to be paid, that doesn't change here on the earth, it doesn't matter, that's not what he said, he said, be still and know I'm God. Then there's going to be something effective in the being still and knowing he's God that's going to get the job done. That doing anything else will not produce. Okay? Now, I know we're all growing in that. Okay? But God knows the heart and he knows whether or not it's already there. Right? That desire, that, that, that wanting him to be absolute Lord of everything in your life, every decision that you always consult him on everything that you do, right? We're all getting there, but he knows if it's in the heart, right? But it's just that you're needing his help in the diligent walking out of it, okay? And when it's the Lord who's the one that's doing the making, making you to increase and abound in love, it's gonna get done all right, right? Like that's my hope. When, it, by, when a scripture says that the Lord's gonna get something done, I'm like, Oh, take a load off. Like, I've got a part. He's got to be Lord in my life. But he says he's going to do it. I just got to get to believing that he meant what he said when he said what he did. And then count on him to do it. But get that coming off my tongue, right? So now I say with my mouth, I say, yeah, the Lord make me increase and abound in love. So that means, God, you've got to be Lord. So, Lord, I declare you, Lord. I declare your lordship in my life. I submit to your lordship now. But I don't stop with just saying it either. No, I, with your help, I commit to, to, to being and doing, living just exactly that way. And now, because I'm committing to that, I'm counting on you to be making me to increase in love, making me to abound in that love you're talking about. I can't produce it. I can't manufacture, but you can. And you can make me abound in this love toward others and toward all men. Okay, you get agreeing with that scripture right there. Add it to your love scripture pages and get agreeing with that scripture. Okay, because it's going to be your job to get that scripture there, put down into your heart. That is your part. And then from there, right, remember the scripture in, remember when Jesus says in Matthew uh, 12, I think it is Matthew 12, um, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart, heart brings forth evil things. Remember that? Now, who determined what those two men got? They did. Right? How did they determine it? By what they put in their hearts. Right? Whatever they put in their hearts came out their mouths <coughs> and manifested in their lives. That's how this works. 
Okay. And so if you want the love of God in you in abundance, running its full course in you, you're going to need to get obeying the scriptures and getting those scriptures put down on the inside, get them down into your heart so they can come out your mouth to be manifested in your life. And then living life fully in the love of God and with the love of God will be the result. Okay. Now when it comes to walking in love with other people, sometimes, sometimes I address this again because it's, it's gotten, it's back to that twisting by the unlearned and the unstable where it's like, well, if you don't accept my sin, you're not loving like God says love. And that's all been twisted. It's all been twisted. So I'm going to come back to this again. When walking in love with other people, sometimes what you've got to do will not feel like love to another person, but it is love. But it is in fact the greatest love. When there has to be a directed by the Lord tough love going on. When there has to be a standing on the truth and doing what God said in that situation. And people are going to accuse you of not being loving toward them, right? Not caring, right? Because you, they, you know, you're not doing what they want you to do, okay? But you're doing what God told you to do. And it's the right thing. It's the best thing. And that is the greatest love for that person. They just can't see it yet. Okay? And so they will go on and yield to lying feelings of being unloved and being uncared for and seek to make sure that you know about it, right? You know, still hoping to get what they want, right? And it can easily get over being manipulative. Satan loves to use love manipulatively, right? But we're not going to participate. No, because love is patient and kind, Scripture says. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not insist on its own rights. It's not selfish. It's not self-seeking, right? And on those, Scripture goes in 1 Corinthians 13. Yes, we need his love in us so that our faith is working. Yes, okay? All oh, but we need the love of God put in us in order to be able to love him well too. In order to love him well, he'll put his love in us to love him well with. Come on, right? He looks after everything, right? And he says, that he says, um, there's a way that we're to love him in it's he says it's with all our hearts okay and there are things that we do that is not loving God and so that's getting off the love walk too it's not just loving others around us there are things that we can do where God is concerned that gets us off the love walk because we're not loving him like we should okay so there are so many things for example um, there's so many things we would not do would not be able to be persuaded to do if we loved him with all of our heart. Because we'd never want to hurt him or dishonor him in any way, right? Like, I don't want to hurt him. So many are hurting him, right? We long to be ones that, you know, when he's the what he, who, ones that he's talking about when he says, you know, they have never given me a moment's grief. When you love it, for God to be able to say that about you, right? But we're not able to even come close to that on our own. We will need for him to fill us with that powerful force called the love of God. But it's our job to put it in and agree with it. And, and you understand that? Okay, that's our job. And when we get off the love walk, we've got to understand we not only hurt somebody else, but we hurt him. Okay, now there's a difference again, right, between hurting somebody, I'm going to hit it again, between hurting someone and someone being upset with you because you did something you had to do and it was right to do, but they didn't like it, so they say you've hurt them. Okay, but God knows the difference between the two. So take a load off. Just do what he tells you to do. Okay, the love of God in you is going to drive everything you do. Okay, and you're the one who's going to have to make the decision to have the love of God perfected in your life. No one else can do that for you. But you can make that decision in faith and then commit yourself to strengthen your heart. Your strengthen your heart by feeding on God's word above, about love. Okay, and you can absolutely be sure that the Lord himself is going to back you all the way and teach you all that you need to know and give you the strength to keep, you know, to keep going and to keep growing in that love. Okay. And if you've got trouble loving somebody, which is almost ridiculous because, you know, there's very few people out there who are hard to love. <laughs> but if, right? If you find one, 
Don't just stand there. We've learned this. Say something. Right? We've learned that. Say something. Right? Look, you can give your attention to the negative things, you know, how difficult that person is to love, and, and those things will take you over. Trouble comes of that. Or you can give your attention to God's word on love, and it'll take you over. And you can keep it in front of your eyes, going in your ears, until it gets into your heart and in your mouth, because victory comes of that. Okay? So you can run up into somebody who's not easy, you know, to either like or love, right? And you get right to it. Say out loud. And say by faith. Not in front of them. <laughs> but say it out loud. Say it by faith. Say it like you mean it. You know, I love that one as I love myself. Oh yeah, I do. I love that one with a pure heart fervently. I will not hit them in the nose and pull their hair, even if I've got time. <laughs> no matter what Ingrid does. Oh, I thought you'd be in trouble when she gets back. All right? But don't go saying, man, that person irritates me. I can't stand them. They're impossible to love. God cannot honor those words. And you just got off the love walk. Right? You just got off the love walk thinking those words, let alone saying them. And we have all been there more times than we like to think about. No. Call those things that be not as though they were. Say, I love that person like I love myself. Right? Because that's what God told you to say. That's what he told you to do in the scriptures. Right? Again, if you want the dog, don't call the cat. If you want love working, don't say the person's impossible to love. No, say, I love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. And I love my neighbor <coughs> as I love myself. And I love the brethren, God, as you love the brethren, with a pure heart fervently. Right? You can tell. I need to say this from time to time. <laughs> right? We know by now how this works. God's words. When you speak God's words, it activates spiritual law. And those were God's words that I just spoke. Those are all scriptures. Those are God's words. So when it comes out your mouth, it accomplishes what it was sent to do. Because that's what God's words do. They prosper in the thing they were sent out to do. And they bring God, the plan of God, into our lives. Okay, so in doing that, you give something for, with God, for God to work with. Okay, and then his power can get to work bringing your words to pass. Mm -hmm. Okay? Sometimes my guys would be like, yes, mom, I know the Bible says all that. And then my mom was like, yes, yet here we are. <laughs> Why? Knowing is not doing. Knowing is not doing. Okay? Knowing all of this is not doing it. Let's be ones who do from what we heard in the word today. Amen? Yeah. Is that a help to you? Yes. Good. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. All right. We have no kids to call up. This is like, what do we do with ourselves? Can I tell a cute little story? Yeah. <laughs> nice and loud so we can all hear you. Um, you come over, come over here and then we can pick it up on the, on the recording. Come stand right over here, right over here. Do you mind getting the screen too? Okay. So God loves animals too. So we have a, um, a family behind us that raise goats. Ooh, and so they were, and she's a midwife. So she went from uh, delivering babies, humans, yeah. to delivering goats. So I had said to her, we, my husband and I, we love this couple. They're young and they're very ambitious and they're doing all this beautiful stuff, raising chickens for eggs and stuff oh, like yeah, this. All this organic, pasture-raised, everything. And you know me, it's all like, okay, if I can help <laughs> you with raising things naturally. So all these goats are having babies. And I had said to her the other day, if you need help with anything, because her husband's working, her kids are at school, she's by herself, I said, let us know, and we'll just run over and help you. And I said, honestly, I mean it. Like, we, we want to help you if you need help. So I get this message the other morning. Okay, uh, she says, one of the goats was born over during the night, and it's not doing well, and I have to go and help my grandfather. Can you guys run over? And my husband goes, I can go over by myself if you got to get some work done. And I, sp I felt in my spirit, I had to go too. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm going to go too. So, see this beautiful little goat laying there, and it's barely breathing, a little heat lamp on it. And so, I'm like, this goat's got to live. Yeah, something rises <laughs> up on the inside. This goat is going to live. So, I'm petting it, and I'm praying, and I start speaking in tongues. And I can just feel the spirits getting stronger and stronger. And then finally, it's like, I felt, 
I felt the Lord say to me, okay, now unwrap. She had this like little doggy um, coat on. Un undo that and massage that goat. And you tell that goat that it's healed. And I went, okay. So I'm rubbing Whatever it. he says yeah. to you, do, do it. Do it. So I'm like rubbing it for, I'm like this on it, eh? And you're healed by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> and my husband's watching this and I'm like, you are healed. And a minute, it stood up. It just stood yeah. up. Yes. And I and its tail's going, and it's like it's just waking up. <laughs> oh, I believe it. <laughs> and I'm like, ah! And I keep rubbing. I said, "You're healed. Bless you, go." And then the mother comes over because as soon as the baby started going, ah, ah, little tail, because she was ignoring it because it, she thought it, I, she didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the goat started speaking, like baying to her, she ran right over and starts licking it, attending to it. And I just went, and I knew it was. I said, "This yeah. this goat." And so. Yeah. She comes back and she goes, oh, my coat. <laughs> she, goes, she said, thank you, thank you. And I said, the power of prayer. Yeah. Amen. And so I messaged her. She said, and then she messaged me again and said, thank you so much. And I said, well, that's what prayer does. I said, I prayed. And I said, I called that goat healed. And I said, instantly, it stood up and wanted to walk. Like it went from laying there barely breathing to just instantly got up. Amen. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> and she sent me a picture of this beautiful face. It's pure black with these blue eyes. And uh, she says, what should we call it? My husband goes, Eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids love the name. They're like, oh, I love that name. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. And so she sent me a picture of this beautiful, healthy goat. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. But instantly, yeah. it stood yeah. up. It wanted to get up. Like, and I just watched it go, <gasps> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Now notice something here. Okay. It's not just the power of prayer. It's the power of prayer. Lots of people pray in all kind of nonsense and not seeing results. It's having the word of God in you and walking in the spiritual authority that you know you have in Christ because of what's written in here and then doing what you're told. Go over there. Do this. You did what he said. You're already full of faith because you know your God's going to look at that thing. It's going to live and not die, right? But that's because there's word in you. So then when a situation comes up, first thing that rises up on the inside of you, no, 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 right? And yeah. you went over and did what God told you. So it's not just prayer. Mm -hmm. It's prayer with believing <laughs> faith. It's knowing your spiritual authority and walking in it. So which means that, when the situation runs, shows up in front of you, some terrible diagnosis, some whatever, some terrible thing happens, that's not the time to go running and fill in yourself. Well, I mean, you might as well get started, but it's better that you have filled yourself with this long before that goat needed Linda to take her spiritual authority, right? What does the scripture say? Even creation cries out for the manifestation of the sons of God. Creation, creatures, that goat's like, somebody who knows their spiritual authority Get over here and help me because you're the ones given the power by God to do this stuff. Can you imagine as, as believers of Jesus Christ, if we all operated that way, our world would not be in the condition it's in. Yeah. I have another little story. Yeah, come, come. Oh, really? Okay. So um, this morning um, I was at a church, a local church in Welland. <laughs> And um, they feed people in the morning, every morning, every morning, 365 uh, days a year, they feed uh, people in Welland who are, um, you know, out on the streets. And there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So this morning, um, I was part of, oh, what a blessing, to be a part of feeding 70 people this morning, breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, but it started with a man who would um, enter the church uh, early in the morning, and it, the church backs onto the Market Square in Welland, where a lot of the homeless people will uh, sleep. Mm. And so he entered the church one morning, and this person came up to him and was angry, like vile, miserable, grumpy. And he said, whatever came over him, right? The love of God says, can I make you breakfast? And he said his demeanor changed instantly. And he fed him, and it started this whole program yeah. of feeding people breakfast every morning from this church. It was amazing. But yeah. just meeting that person, you know, just basic need, yeah. and showing the love of God in a very simple way, 
and um, and it, and it just yeah these people come up to the window it was so beautiful to be there and hand them a coffee and a sandwich and a and porridge you know oh yeah. it was wonderful yeah. so yeah yeah just, that's awesome mm -hmm. the love of God eh? just in a simple statement but it, when it's right you know that soft answer turns away wrath mm -hmm. and all that like yeah. it's it's a it's a real thing something and people so are craving yeah something mm -hmm. so small but people are craving it I read this one thing where this this guy was this guy had said. Um, that obviously he's being very vulnerable and saying how he is just, he feels so alone that it's to the point where when he went through the, through the, to the restaurant or it was drive through but I don't know how that doesn't make sense. Cause the, whoever was touched his arm, like he, he joked and said something about it's okay. Here's your change or something. And just that simple touch on his arm, like it just made him feel like, he almost wanted to marry the person or something. Like, you're just like, this person loves me, which is so ridiculous because all they did, but it, it, it mm -hmm. impacts it, imp especially in this day when it's such a loveless, the right kind, you know? And so it's just the love of God. When the darkness is the darkest, the light's going to shine forth the light is the brightest, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. When, what does that scripture say that there's going to be Darkness and gross darkness is going to cover the people, but the light, but the light's going to shine, right? It's going to, Amen. it's going to <laughs> shine bright. So we have opportunities, simple little things, right? Don't mm -hmm. undervalue the simple little things. Yeah, Sean. I, I can share with you that I, prior to having Jesus in my life, anger was an issue. Like, can, under, you, can, yeah. you, can you just, you don't even have to come on here, but just louder so they can hear you. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, You're louder. Okay. Yeah. So anger was an issue in my life. That was my first reaction to everything in life. And um, so going grocery shopping, because I, I wasn't well the week, uh, no, hang on. I, I was not able to go to the grocery store the week before Easter. So the only day available to me was Saturday. And I was like, oh God, it's gonna be so busy, right? <laughs> So my new theory or my new mantra when I do anything out in public that I feel it's going to be busy, I'm like, be Jesus like, be Jesus like, just love everybody. And I will tell you, it really worked. Not one person irritated me. Not one person yeah. was mean to me. <laughs> I had smiles and laughing with a whole bunch of like strangers, you know, like when you run into each other with buggies and stuff, but an accident. Yeah. And it, it was the best experience I've had. <laughs> so that's my new saying when I go out in yeah. public, be Jesus like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it it's basically a real love thing. everybody, right? Yeah. So this is very, very, very yeah. well timed. But you couldn't do that on your own. You couldn't just decide one day that's what you're going to do. No. no, no, but God's love is a powerful force. Absolutely, and, it does, and that's yeah. something that I've yeah. uh, asked for. Yeah, since I I started walking with Jesus, because yeah. it is impacting my life hugely. Like yeah. my family sees a difference mm -hmm. in, in my anger and my reaction yeah. to life, but strangers don't because they don't know the previous. Yeah, <laughs> version. yeah, but that that's usually the best when it, when someone show when when your family can see it. Oh, yeah. yeah. When they're they, yeah. they usually can see it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, no, that's awesome. You can you can testify that as well though. That's not tongues, that's Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, when your family can tell you. Yes, yes. Because yes. like we've discussed before, Rosie was a different picnic before. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Alrighty. God's good. Let's just let's just close in prayer. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you. You have literally done everything for us. We just gotta cooperate with you. Our part is so minimal. You do it all if we'll just agree with you, believe you, and do what you said. That simple. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you that your love transforms everything, transforms who we are and how we 
think and, and relationships. And I mean, it, tra it causes our faith to work. So circumstances change for us. So people can look at us and say, yeah, well, everything good always happened to you. Yeah, because I got a hold of some stuff and you did that all for us. And we just thank you. We thank you for it. And with your help, we're going to continue to grow in it. We commit ourselves to not just be, you know, hearers of the word, but to be doers of what you tell us to do and doers getting a hold of those love scriptures and putting them down on the inside of us until that we couldn't be unloving if we tried. We can get there and because your word is alive and it's powerful and it can produce exactly that. And so we just commit to you to cooperate with you better tomorrow than we did today and more the next day than we do even tomorrow and we just thank you for your goodness and faithfulness now be with each one as they go their separate ways um, and through this week that we can walk in that love of God and watch it do its powerful for its powerful work and so we thank you again in <clears throat> Jesus name amen, amen. amen.